I was bored. That's how this all started. I was bored at work one day. I worked at Universal Studios as a pyro loader. Um, but I had sort of a um, interesting, I was sort of interesting because I didn't look like the other pyro loaders that worked there. I didn't have tattoos on my face, <laughs> right? And uh, I used to show up to work sober. I thought that was something you should do. Uh, so part of my job was that I was allowed to go into the park uh, and I would get dressed up as different, like different, I would get the uniforms of other departments so I could be backstage, like if we're doing a Christmas lighting, I'd dress up like a show usher. You know, or if we're like doing a show, like they were filming something, I would dress up like a food court person and run the equipment in the back. Um, the thing about working as a power loader, like at the Waterworld show, was the way that they set up the schedule was that they would schedule you for eight hours and they would book one show in the morning and then two shows at the end of the day and then right in the middle of the day, you had a four hour break. Uh, because it was cheaper to have you on staff to add an extra show instead of calling people in at the last minute. So for most of, most of my time working there, like during the off season, I'd have an eight hour day, but have four hours with nothing to do. Uh, a lot of people had other jobs. They would go to school, right? Um, and they would, um, you know, and then other people would just, you know, get drunk or whatever it was they would do, they'd just leave. But I didn't have a car. I was boring, right? Um, so I wandered up to the uh, wardrobe department, right, or costume or whatever it is, not like, not actual wardrobe department, like uniform department. I was the third floor, and I asked, and I said, can I get an usher uniform? And the guy behind the counter just gave me an usher uniform. And, he, and I said, can I get a name tag, but can you put R Roberto on it? And he said, Roberto? And he said, yeah, and they just handed it to me. Not enough questions, by the way. This is pre-9-11, so no questions asked. He's like, okay, just handed me the name tag. And then I started walking out toward the park, like toward the, toward the theme park, call it, we call it the park. I call it Arca Park, and it was sort of like the reverse of the end of Usual Suspects. You know how Kaiser Soze loses the limp and then he kind of walks up and pulls out a cigarette? I created a limp, I put the hat on, I tilted it to the side, I started limping like this, and then when I got to the, the park, I started talking like this, and I was Roberto. That's what happened. And I, when I hit the park, I just decided to be the friendliest person you had ever met in your entire life. And the thing was, my very first job at Universal Studios, I worked in the merchandise stores, right? And I worked at the flagship store, and they had the history of Universal playing over and over. And anyone who's ever worked retail knows the music or video, they just play it over eight hours. The videos are like 20 minutes long. And so the history was pounded into my mind. I've got this memory like a sponge, so I knew everything about the park. You could ask me any question. Right? And so people would be like, excuse me, sir, where's the bathroom? I'm like, oh, yes, the bathrooms are right over here next to the animal actor stage. And actually, you know, that's where the original chicken farm was when Universal Studios used to be a chicken farm. And then we decided to film movies here. And I just could do it anything. I could pull any fact out of my ass. And I was just like the best version of me, like the best version, because I, I figured. And at first, nobody knew that I was doing it, right? But eventually, the ushers cut on because I was a creative person. I wasn't like one of the stagehands. Again, no tattoos on my face. Um, and I was a creative person, so uh, they caught on and they, they started having fun with it because they would also, the thing that the ushers would do is they would do all the announcements before all the shows, like the Beetlejuice show or the Wild West Sun show. And so what I would do is I, before like, if I was at the water, again, Waterworld show, I would dress up like a show usher, walk out with my limp in my hat and be like, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for attending the 315 showing of the Waterworld Sun Spectacular. You will get wet if you sit in the blue section. And I would just go into it, I would get laughs, it was great. My favorite thing that I did at the park, though, was at night when they closed, like at midnight or whatever, they had a closing, someone do the closing announcements at the front of the park. And it's pre-recorded now, but it used to be, you could do it live. And so I would do that every once in, a while. once in a while. I would go up and be like, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood. My name is Roberto. Make sure you check out Universal City Walk if you're exiting the park. And I would just do this thing. That was just a great little thing. I did it for weeks, and I thought, this is great, I'll do this forever, I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna be an actor, I'm gonna get famous, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and then one day I'm going to work to my regular job in my regular uniform as Oscar, and there was a guy in a suit. Again, never saw people in a suit, right? And he looked at me and said, Oscar? I'm like, yeah, Oscar Sakasume? And I said, yes, come with me. And they walked me into the building. And I, the, the Universal's, like where, where I worked, there was, one, there was a bunch of buildings, but only one building I ever entered. And the highest I ever went was the fourth floor, was the entertainment office. And I never went into the office, I just went to the counter. Uh, we went up to the fifth floor, and then we checked in with the secretary, 
And she said, and he, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's happening. And it was confirmed when, uh, when the guy went up to the secretary and said, this is Oscar. And she's like, Oscar? He goes, yeah, Roberto. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> and they sit me down in a boardroom, and I'd never seen a boardroom. I didn't even know that the part, they didn't have it because I was a grunt. Like, I didn't know any of this stuff was happening. And I'm freaking out because I'd never in like the four years I'd been working there, had gotten in trouble. The only time I had gotten in trouble was when I used to work at that store, that first store, right? And I was secret shopped by some guest uh, or something, but the guest came in and he was, I remember the guest because he was, he was asking if we had Betamax versions of those movies, right? And it was the late 90s, it wasn't that far out, but still, Betamax, right? But I, I, I just remember the conversation, I wasn't rude to the guy, right? Because I'm poor as shit, like I'm poor, this is my only job, I, I understand it. And the manager called, called me back and he read the report and I'm freaking out because then as most of my life I was poor and I couldn't lose my job. And he looked at me and said, and he said, the guy, the, the, the manager's name, his name was Michael. And Michael was like, Oscar, you're the best employee we have here. This is bullshit. I don't believe it. Took the report, tore it in half. He says, don't worry about it. All right. I'm like, great, great. And so I'm sitting there and I'm really starting to freak out because I was poorer than then. I wasn't living anywhere. I was like surfing couches. I didn't have a car, right? Um, I had, I would sometimes hook up with women just so I could stay at their place for a couple days. Um, back when I was much better looking. You don't have to laugh so hard at that. Um, <laughs> and I, I couldn't do this. I, I couldn't do this. I couldn't lose this job. There's, they're, they're not, I don't know if you guys know this, but power loader on your resume does not help you get other jobs <laughs> in LA. It doesn't matter how LA LA is. Um, and I, I don't, I, I was done. I was, I knew they were gonna fire me. I was worried they were gonna arrest me. I didn't know what, if I broke any laws. I'm kind of stupid. Um, and then the door, the door opens and it's the guy with the suit and he says, okay, the vice president of Universal's like employee relations is gonna come talk to you. And then he walked out. I never talked to anyone more than a manager, right? This is vice president, corporate level. This guy has, this guy also probably has a suit, I'm assuming, I don't know. I was, I was pissing my pants. I was terrified. There was no union rep, which I thought was weird, but you know, it was a, it was a corporate, maybe they're gonna cut my throat and throw me out the window. I don't know what happens. <laughs> and the door opens, and it's a guy and a very, very handsome man, older man in a suit, but it's Michael. It's that manager from the store. And he sits down, but he's not smiling, right? And he has a folder that's pretty thick, and he opens it up, and he says, Roberto, huh? And I go, uh, yeah, yeah, I was, you know, I was just trying to have some, some fun. And then I remember the advice my dad gave me because I, I was involved with cops a lot. He says, don't talk. Let them talk to you. And so I, st I, I got quiet and he said, so do you want to know how we found out about you? And I'm like, yeah, of course, sure. And he says, well, all of a sudden people kept coming to guest relations. That's where people come and say things about people that work there. And they wanted to have us give a, an award to this amazing employee we had <laughs> named Roberto. He was so knowledgeable of the park and he was so nice. He talked funny and he had a limp. We all figured he was special. But there were so many people coming and they, they looked down and they're like, there's no one that works here named Roberto. <laughs> and we couldn't figure it out. So we put together a task force. His words, <laughs> not my words, his words. I'm assuming two or three people and the one guy at the computer uh, to find out who you were and we were able to find out that it was you pretending to be a human being for weeks. <laughs> Grabbing the microphone, making announcements to the entire theme park, uh, lying to people. I'm like, what? Like lying, lying to who you were, right? And I was, I, I had no defense. Like, what do you say to that? Like, yes, it was amazing. You know, but it was, I didn't, you know, and he, I know, I know. And so he took, he took up the report. He walked over to me very, uh, across the boardroom table, because it was a table, it was like one of those movies, or across the table, and he sits down next to me and he says, you are very lucky that I am the manager that they ended up bumping this up to, because it kept going up the chain, because they didn't know what to do. <laughs> but I know that you, you had a good heart, and I personally would hire you, but technically you're black, blackball from any other department, don't do it again, he tore it up, I kept my job, and I went home, I was suspended for one day, and that was the most I ever got in trouble for that. Thank you. Oh